We will never be able to divest God of the responsibility for the existence of evil. He designed it into this universe. You have sin, you have rape, you have abuse, you have wars, all these things. God is working after the counsel of his will. I want to welcome everyone to the very first Honest Calvinist Conference. This is indeed a historic event. We will be presenting Calvinism as it is, raw and unfiltered. We have some wonderful guest speakers for this event. You're really in for a treat. Paul Washer, Steve Lawson, John MacArthur, Justin Peters, Phil Johnson, James White, and several other similarly ideologically possessed teachers of Reformed theology will expose you to the truth of Calvinism. The sovereignty of God means that He has supreme authority over all the works of His hands, including every fart and belch of both man and beast. Only a God so concerned over the perfect amount of flatulence uh, could rightly be called sovereign. If there is one rogue toot, or random poot, um, um, mm, then we could never have assurance we will be saved, and we believe in a saving God. I like to refer to the kingship of God because that's, that's a really biblical way of describing things, though it doesn't accurately reflect my views, but that's okay because Americans don't really understand kings very well. So I say sovereign to mask my belief in exhaustive divine determinism, which is really just fatalism as I deny there was ever a moment in the life of God where he freely determined or decreed anything. In fact, I just appeal to God as a utility to explain the origins of the universe. So the sovereign God I believe in is more of an ethereal fate machine or a world engine. As he brings all things to pass due to a divine decree he never issued. When we talk about the sovereignty of God, we're talking about the the micromanagement of God's eternal pre-creation decree. Sovereignty is a code word for meticulous determinism that God determined every act of sin with specificity. Now, we will often claim this doesn't mean God is the author of sin, except when we then claim that God is, in fact, the author of sin. We often contradict ourselves and appeal to mystery rather than try to resolve an obvious contradiction. This allows us to preach against sin while continuing to believe every sin we commit was ordained by God in eternity past. Sin is necessary for God to receive maximal glory. Thus our sin glorifies him. If we were consistent we would say the reason people are offended by the sovereignty of God is that God himself decreed them to be offended. They cannot be otherwise. But we're Calvinists, so we're not remotely consistent. As God stated in Romans 2, God has written on our hearts and our conflicting thoughts bear witness and condemn us. God tells us in James 1 that he tempts no one. We innately know that it is a great blasphemy to claim God effectually decreed all sin and evil with specificity. Yet, we are so indoctrinated into the erroneously entitled doctrines of grace that we stubbornly refuse to repent. Allow me, if you will, just to begin by thanking you gentlemen for being here. It is the voices of many of you that have been a powerful impact. I know I speak for many. Your voices have been powerful 
for indoctrinating unsuspecting Christians into fatalism and other false doctrines. You all have such nice suits and million dollar smiles. You speak with confidence and are revered by so many, it feels safe to agree with you. The subject of our conference is the sovereignty of God. Why did God decree us to have this conference? We can never really know why God decreed us to hold this conference. We could appeal to his revealed will, we could ponder his secret will, but right now I'm totally unable as I'm instead considering a large meat lovers from Papa John's as is in keeping with his sovereign decree. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. But getting back to tonight's topic, we all believe that God has decreed literally everything. This includes even the false beliefs of regenerate Christians. So how do we have any assurance God hasn't decreed us to hold false beliefs about our own regeneration and salvation? Well, as we're at the Honest Calvinist Conference, the short answer is we don't. It's just wishful thinking lacking any epistemic justification. I mean, we can point to the various reasons we have, but they're all undermined by the entailments of divine determinism, but we don't readily admit this. It makes us extremely uncomfortable and even angry. Essentially, we believe we're elect because we believe we're elect. It's incredibly circular. Oh, absolutely. 